Team Viewer. Like seriously, I've been using Team Viewer for 20 years, but enough is enough. Let me explain. For those of you new to the channel, I'm Anton, a power engineer, industrial mechanic, and a Red Seal electrician. We cover all kinds of products and topics in an approachable way for the average everyday person. I'm glad you found us. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. TeamViewer is one of the most popular remote desktop softwares out there. They've rise to a huge market share over the years. Back in 2005, when they first came out, I was a very early adopter. I had a lot of laptops in the house, I had PCs in the house, and I had friends and family who just weren't as good at using computers as I was, and TeamViewer was a natural solution to provide remote desktop options. And with their free private use model, it was a natural pick because it was very powerful software that you didn't have to pay for. Now fast forward to last year, I started binge watching Drive to Survive on Netflix. It's a series that follows F1 through the entire season, gives you lots of background on the teams and all the drama and all that. If you've watched it, you know what I'm talking about. But as a new F1 viewer, I was surprised to see a giant team viewer sticker plastered on the side of some of the cars. I started to delve deeper into F1 and I found out there's a lot of money in sponsorships. How is a software that's probably mostly used as a free private subscription able to pay the sponsorship money needed to get your sticker on the side of an F1 car? So naturally I thought, wow, Team viewers actually doing pretty good for themselves. They're making some decent money while providing a service to the little guy, someone like me at a reduced cost and or free. So, you know, they're not so bad after all. So why then would I suddenly have the stance of F team viewer? I didn't have to wonder for very long because all of a sudden I was met with this message. Yeah, it was an error message that said, before you continue, it turns out we think you might be using TeamViewer in a commercial setting and therefore you need to pay us some money. Now, that was not true at all. I was using it in my home for a home environment, not commercial in any way. So what do you do when you've been wrongfully flagged as needing a TeamViewer commercial license when you're like me and you're just using it at home? Well, it turns out there is an appeal process, which I'm gonna walk you through right now. To start out with, I just went to Google and I typed Team Viewer Appeal. Now, you're gonna be tempted to go to the website, but I found that the second link where it says commercial use suspected, if you click that link, it's going to take you into the knowledge base, which will say, here's how to reset your Team Viewer ID. And then you go to this link, teamviewer.com slash reset. Once you go there, there's a nice big shiny button that says click here to start. Now when you click it, it just slides down the thing and then you click on login. You're gonna do your enter in your login information and then it's gonna ask for your password, which you're gonna type out and hit the sign in button. That's gonna take you right back to the first page that you're on and then you can click click here to start again. And now it's going to ask you to reclaim your free version. Now they're gonna ask you, how are you using TeamViewer? So I typed in just some generic response. I use it at home to connect to my PCs. The next thing they're gonna ask is to provide all of the TeamViewer device IDs. If you're not sure what you are, you can look at your managed devices from your TeamViewer login and on the right, it says Team Viewer ID. Now you can copy it and paste it in, but what you're gonna find is it uh, keeps the spaces and they don't want spaces. So you're gonna have to remove the spaces and then add the two numbers that it missed because of the spaces being included. Now you're gonna do that for all of the devices that you use because you want to clear all of them up from any of the issues that you're having where you were wrongfully flagged. And then once you're done filling them all in, you're gonna check the box that says, please note that your personal data will be processed in accordance with TeamViewer privacy notice and hit the submit button. You're gonna be met with a landing page that says, Thank you for reclaiming your free version. We are working to resolve this issue and unblock your device. Please note that the response 
may take up to 72 hours. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. You see, it's been a week now. I've submitted this twice. It's taken way more than 72 hours and my account is still not unlocked. Now I did do this process mm, about a year ago when I got flagged then as well and they did unlock it at that time and it took a little while. But now here we are a year later, they're flagging me again. They've provided no information about why I've been flagged at all. As far as I can tell, I haven't done anything that would make me get flagged for using it as a commercial license. But I don't know, maybe I don't understand the rules. The alternative is to start paying a monthly fee for a subscription before you're tempted to take them up on the offer to do a monthly or an annual license. Keep in mind, many, many, many users have reported that once you have a license, it is almost impossible to cancel it. So you wanna be very careful that you don't sign up for something thinking, I'll just cancel it later. It is super hard to do and you're gonna end up paying it for many more months than you ever thought you would. So my recommendation, if you are a personal user and you've been flagged, do not fall for the tactic of just signing up and giving it a try. No, there are many alternatives out there and we're gonna jump into the one that I switched to very shortly. And really this starts to answer the question that I had. How does TeamViewer have the money needed to put that sticker on the side of an F1 team to further their business? It's really simple. They get you hooked and then they flag you for using it outside of the free service terms and then try to get you in on that monthly subscription. So after 20 years of using TeamViewer, I'm saying F this, I'm moving on. But what are the other options? Now, obviously TeamViewer has been the popular choice for many people, not just me, but it is the number one software. So if you haven't been flagged, then keep using TeamViewer. It's not bad, I just wouldn't pay for it. There's also no machine. This is a free, secure, and fast remote desktop application that allows users to access their computer from any device and share their desktop with others or any desk. They offer a free plan for personal use but professional users need a license, very similar to what TeamViewer is doing. Rust Desk is a free and open source remote desktop software that provides a secure and efficient way to access and control computers remotely. AeroAdmin, a remote desktop software that allows users to control remote computers and offers features like remote computer control, unattended access, and file transfer. Zoho Assist offers a limited free version that lets one technician access five computers, but it doesn't match TeamViewer's features in even remotely close. It is very stripped down. And the choice that we went with, Chrome Remote Desktop. Now, before you roll your eyes and turn off this video, hear me out. It allows you to access your computer from anywhere using your phone, tablet, or another computer, and it offers most of the features of TeamViewer, maybe in a more simplistic way, but in this case, simplistic isn't necessarily bad. The Chrome Remote Desktop is extremely easy to set up and we will demonstrate that very shortly so you can see how simple it actually is. But also when you just want no hassles, Remote Desktop is a great way to go. They don't have a trial option and they don't have the subscription model. So a lot of those other ones, they wanna get your credit card information so that you can sign up for the free trial and then if you just forget to turn it off, then they'll just start billing your credit card. And I, I just really don't like those bait and switch tactics. How many people check their credit card balance and find all these things that have been charged to their credit card that they didn't even know were getting taken off because they totally forgot about it. That is a super sneaky way to get money from people and I don't like it. And I started to get those vibes from a lot of the different options that I was considering. So let's go through exactly how to install Chrome Remote Desktop. And I'm gonna to connect to the computer right behind us there. Now the first thing we're gonna do is go to Google and we're gonna just search for Chrome Remote Desktop. The first link is gonna be Chrome Remote Desktop and we're gonna click on Access My Computer. Now when we do that, it's gonna say Set Up Remote Access right away. All we're gonna do is click this button. It will download Chrome Remote Desktop and an add-in for Chrome. So I'm gonna add this extension into my Chrome just because it makes it a lot easier. But also, it needs to install the app to provide unattended access. Now, if, the, if you're walking a parent or loved one or a family member through this, this is very easy to walk them through on the phone, but you can also send this video and say, hey, start the video from this point 
and they can do the install themselves. So it will download an installer, which they will need to install. We're gonna say, yes, go ahead and install that. Now that it's installed, I mean, it's done. All we gotta do is name this. So I'm gonna call this Gears and Tech Laptop, just like that. Now it's gonna ask for a pin. So you need to create a secure pin for the remote access to work. And I'm gonna leave help improve Chrome remote desktop by allowing Google to collect information. And that is it. Now it's starting the Gears and Tech laptop remote desktop. Now that that's installed on this machine, we need to go to all the other machines and do the exact same process. You need to make sure that they're all linked to the same Google account. So it's not a big deal if you have only one Google account, but just double check that the icon in the top right corner matches the one for all the Google accounts that you're using. And that's for personal remote access. If you're trying to connect to family members, they're gonna use a different Google account, but it's okay, you'll be able to share your connection with them. Now that we've got the plugin installed, we can go ahead and open Chrome again, and I just like to pin it here. So I just pull that down, I click pin, and then I can click this, and it will pull up the device, and it'll list all of the devices that are connected. So that's it for yourself at this stage. Again, if you've got a family member, they're just going to click on remote desktop and then say share this screen, which will generate a code, which you can then, or they can tell you the code, and then you can remote into their computer. And all you're going to do to do that is down here where you say connect to another computer, you're going to enter in the access code that they gave you. Now in my case, I want remote unattended access. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other computer. So off camera, I've done the exact same install on the other computer. And now when I open up the Chrome remote desktop, it shows both computers. Now that one obviously is called editing rig. So I'm going to connect to that just by double clicking. Now it does open it in a web browser, which can sometimes get a little confusing, but after a little bit of use, you'll get used to it. Now it's going to ask for the top secret pin code that you created for connection, which I'm going to type in. And I'm going to say, remember pin on this device. If you're on a public device, don't click that button but this will make it so it doesn't ask for the pin every time. First thing we're gonna see is that this is connecting to a dual screen setup and it's really hard to see. So I'll show you what I do for the dual screen setup. I just go down here to where it says show all displays and then I just pick a display. So in my case, my main display is display two. So I just go like that. And then you can also say scale to fit. If you don't, then it makes it bigger, which is super easy to read, but I can still read it when it's in scale to fit. And then this is the complete remote desktop. You can see it's moving around in the background here while I'm doing stuff. And I can do everything that I normally did before on this laptop. So you can do file transfer, you can move stuff around as if you were sitting at this desk. It does pretty much all the basic functions that I needed to do with TeamViewer anyway, and I haven't found any functions that it doesn't do. So it works great in my home environment, but also remotely. The other advantage is it ties in really well with your Android phone to where you can do remote desktop from your phone very, very easily, as well as from a tablet. So suddenly you don't have to drag a laptop around when you have access to a full high powered computer rig somewhere else, you get that remote viewer. You can do a lot of those functions remotely, which is very, very handy. The biggest strengths for the Chrome remote desktop is the ease of setup, especially when you're helping people who aren't technically inclined and the free feature of it where it's just always free. They're not coming asking for money for any reason. So there's no reason that they're gonna trick you or try to strong arm you into paying money for the service because it's just free. It's offered as part of Google's suite of services that they collect all your data and information and sell it to people overseas. And that's how they get their money so that you don't have to pay for it. Now, obviously I'm just joking because they would never sell your data or your information. Now I want to know how you guys feel about that. Have you had a similar experience with team viewer like me? Share your experiences in the comments down below. I love reading the comments and I respond to most of them. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. 
you can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.